Well, good morning and uh, welcome to this Church Without Walls service from All Saints Otbrook and St Stephen's Borrowash. It's really good to connect with you today, uh, wherever you are. In a time of crisis, I think we become aware of just how much we need one another. And I'd like, therefore, to pay tribute to all the volunteers and key workers in our churches and our community here who are doing so much to help those in need. Thank you all for your courage, your compassion, your care and your creativity. One of my school friends messaged me uh, these words this week. Being in self-isolation for nearly a week now could do with a bit of a spiritual uplift. Well, I pray for us all, whatever we face, however we feel, whether our faith is strong or weak or non-existent, that in the disruption and danger around us, through this service without walls, we may encounter God's presence and peace in our lives together. And now I'm going to do something with actions for the children that are watching and uh, it's great that the children are joining us today. Um, I'm going to go through this once and then we can all join together. It's called God with me. Uh, God is with me in the good times. And we just put our thumbs up. When I'm happy, so is God. And we smile. God is with me in the good times. We put our thumbs up. That's because God cares for me. And we just point to ourselves. God is with me in the bad times. We put our thumbs down. When I'm sad, God won't let me go. We just hold our hands like that. God is with me in the bad times. That's because God loves me so. So let's do that together. God with me. God is with me in the good times. When I'm happy, so is God. God is with me in the good times. That's because God cares for me. God is with me in the bad times. When I'm sad, God won't let me go. God is with me in the bad times. That's because God loves me so. Amen. And now let's pray together. Living and loving God, at this time of uncertainty, I pray for each of us connected here, that in the good times and the bad times we face, we may know you guiding and guarding and going with us always. Amen. Two weeks ago, I was driving home and I approached uh, a roundabout near where we live. And my satnav said to me these words, stay on Bardil's roundabout for five and a half miles. As roundabouts go, I quite like that one, but I couldn't imagine being on it for five and a half miles. Because of the danger of coronavirus, we've all been told to stay indoors to save lives. If, like me, you're an active person, that's a bit like driving round and round and round a roundabout, and there's a long way to go. Uh, since January, in our normal church services, we've been looking at some of the Psalms in the Bible and asking how they may be relevant to our lives today. Many of the Psalms are called laments, and these literally sob with sorrow and sadness. There's fear and pain. There's anger and doubt and depression. There's helplessness and grief all over these psalms. Let me give you a short example from Psalm 13, verses 1 to 2. How long, O oh God, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts every day and have sorrow in my heart? Well, we're not told what this person is facing, but they're obviously in a very dark and difficult place. 
I'd like to be really honest with you today. Um, I'm, I've been struggling uh, over the last week um, with my own worry and fear uh, about my family and my own life and health, my friends, uh, about our future together, what that might look like. And I suspect some of you deeply resonate with that today. Well, this is what I've begun to do. I've begun to pray some of these psalms of lament and I've made them my own. They seem to say everything that I want to say, but can't quite find the words to say. I found the process deeply healing and spiritually uplifting. You know, we don't have to present the best version of ourselves to God. We don't have to be in a good place to draw near to God or to pray for help or to ask what the hell's going on. The truth is that God accepts us just as we are, broken, often suffering, bewildered and afraid. God understands, God cares and God loves for each of us. Years ago, as a young soldier, I found myself in a very dark place with my life spiralling out of control. And I found myself one day crying out to a God I didn't really believe in. And, you know, at that point of need, chafed by reality, I encountered God's love for me in Jesus Christ. I still find it difficult to fully articulate the experience that I had then. I discovered God's light shining in the darkness. I discovered God in a very unusual place. So at this time of crisis, why not use some of the Psalms of Lament and make them your own this week? Maybe you too will discover God's presence and peace and power and life and light for you, just as you are and just where you are. There are other psalms which are very different, and these express praise and thanks to God. And we were going to look at one today in our church services. It's Psalm 50, and I'd like to read it for you now from my Bible. It goes like this. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power and praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, you could be forgiven for thinking that those kind of words have no place for us at the moment in this crisis that we're facing. But I believe this crisis is helping many of us to be more grateful for the simple things in life which we often take for granted. So I've made myself a little praise list this week and each day I've been thanking God for these things, for my family, for my faith for the home that we have, for the sunshine that we've seen this week and the spring flowers, for the food that we enjoy, for all the key workers and volunteers and even for Bardil's roundabout. As I've been forced to slow down, I'm appreciating these things in a new way and giving thanks to God for them has been spiritually uplifting and emotionally cathartic for me. Why not write your own list and use it each day this week? Or better still, write a psalm of praise and use that to give thanks to God for all that you have in your life. I heard about a vicar last Sunday who, like me, was live streaming a service for the very first time, and he leant too close to a candle and he set his jumper on fire. You may have seen the photograph online. He said these words afterwards. My family loved it. 
and the grandchildren want to know when granddad is going to set himself on fire again. Lovely. Well, with that in mind, um, I'm going to light a candle just for a few moments of reflection, and I promise I won't get too close. As we reflect for a few moments, I encourage you in these days that we're facing to read the Psalms in the Bible. May they be a light to your path and a lamp to your feet. Make the Psalms of lament, of lament your own. Be honest to God about your fears and make the Psalms of praise your own too. Use them to thank God in these difficult times for all the blessings that we enjoy. And as you do that, my prayer is that you may encounter God just where you are. We now come to a time of prayer, and after each short prayer, I'm going to pray, Lord, in your mercy, and would you please respond with the words, hear our prayer. So let's try that to start. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, sometimes it's difficult to know how and what to pray. Words don't easily express how we feel at this time of uncertainty and danger and fear. We ask that we may know your healing peace in our lives and minds and lives. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, be with all those who mourn the death of loved ones. Be with those who are poorly today. Be with all key workers who carry on working. Be with political leaders. Give them wisdom in response and an ability to work with the leaders of other nations. Be with those who are seeking a vaccine for COVID-19 and be with us all as we endure and mourn and persist and prepare. Lord, in your mercy. Right. Loving God, as the days lengthen and the earth spends longer in the light of day, may we spend time in the light of your presence. May the seeds of your word buried within us grow like everything around us into love for you and all you love, a visible declaration of your praise in our lives. May there be a springtime in our lives this Lent, Lord God. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we give you thanks today for the gift of tears. For tears of grief, redeeming our mourning from despair. For tears of laughter, celebrating our joy in living. And for tears of anger, awakening a desire for justice. May the light of Christ shining through our tears become the rainbow of your promise, shedding colours of your love's bright presence in your grieving, struggling, laughing world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We're going to bring our prayers to an end by praying together the Lord's Prayer, the traditional version. Let's pray these ancient words together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
But just before we end the service, there's one or two notices. Um, firstly, I've got some children's pictures like I had last week. These are from Felicity and Olivia. So this first picture is a pizza by Felicity. I'd like to thank Felicity for that. That pizza looks rather scrummy, that does Felicity. And then um, I've got a picture here from another one from Felicity. Um, I'm four years old. Hello, it's been really good fun drawing this picture of a flower and a bee. I hope you really enjoy it. Thank you for that, Felicity. And then finally, this is from Olivia. Hello, my name is Livy and I'm two years old. I hope you're having a good day. And if it's your birthday today, have a really happy birthday. That's lovely, Livy. Thank you uh, very much for that. Um, now, talking about birthdays, one or two children have had birthdays this week. Um, Hayley York has had a birthday. Um, Lottie Dimelo was 12 on Thursday. And Elanas Bowley had a birthday yesterday. So happy birthday to those. Um, Jill Rowland also had a birthday on Wednesday and Moira Dick had a birthday on Thursday. I'd like to wish Jill and Moira a very happy birthday as well. I hope you had a good day. And Brian and Beth Meese celebrated their 64th wedding anniversary this week. And I hope you had a really special day together. And just to remind you, these services, these Church Without Wall services, are being um, broadcast every Sunday at 10 a.m. whilst our buildings are closed. Um, once this um, service has been edited, it will be uploaded onto our YouTube channel and it will be um, along with uh, something from our organist and choral scholar Joe Harland has put together. Uh, Joe is playing and singing her own arrangement of the hymn Be Thou My Vision. And it's absolutely stunning. So I hope you can look on to the YouTube channel and listen to that. Uh, any notices for next week's news sheet, please go to Moira as usual. We finish now with a short reading from the Bible and a prayer of blessing. And I pray you'll all stay safe and well until we meet again. What shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus? Shall trouble separate us? No. Shall hardship separate us? No. Shall hunger separate us? No. Shall danger separate us? No. What then shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus? Nothing. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and in Christ Jesus, God's Son. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you. Remain with you and those you carry on your hearts now and always. Amen.